Hi, today I'm going to be talking about the ideas, procedure, calculations behind molecular mass by freezing point depression. The first thing we need to pay, pay attention to is um, just what's going on with freezing point depression. So freezing point depression is a colligative property. These, these are, there's a few of them, vapor, press, or vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, osmotic pressure. All these things depend on not so much what solute molecules are mixed with the solvent, but how many there are. So it's pretty much there. It's not entirely, um, if you get looking at very, uh, if you look at things very precisely, you can start to see some intermolecular force effects, but largely these changes in properties are due to um, just how many solute molecules or, or ions or atoms or whatever those things are make up or are, are kind of um, in the presence of a certain amount of solvent. So each solvent has its own freezing point depression constant and called Kf, K sub S. And for water, we know that it's 1.86 degrees C per molal. That little m is a new measurement or a different measurement of concentration that I'll talk to you about on the next slide. But the change in freezing point is given by um, the uh, this freezing point depression constant times the molality. The, uh, and the change in freezing point is going to be a positive value. So because the freezing point of the solution is lower than the solvent, if we calculate the uh, if we calculate the the uh, change in temperature by taking the freezing point of the pure solvent minus the freezing point of the solution, this is going to be a positive value. This the freezing point of the solution, it's always going to be less than the freezing point of the solvent because of the depression that takes place. So one thing that this means is that if we measure uh, the depression and the freezing point, and we know the freeze, the depression constant, we do, then we can relate that back to the molality of the sample. Um, so first off, let me tell you, what is molality? So this is a slightly different unit of concentration, and it gets used in these freezing point depression calculations. I, it's, um, I'm not exactly sure why why it does, but it, it, this is this is what goes on. So molality is defined as the moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. And this is a little bit different than almost any other uh, concentration measurement I can think of. It's usually the some measure of the amount of solute or or any uh, any um, component of a mixture divided by a property device that that describes the whole mixture. So it might be the volume of solution, it might be the mass of solution. Um, it might be, uh, so those are the big ones, but it's always on the bottom, you're always the mass, volume, something of the whole solution. Molality is different in that it's of the solvent by itself. And so you have to be careful on that in remembering that these moles of the, the the mass of the solute is not contributing to the denominator here to the kilograms of solvent that's just the amount of uh, the mass in kilograms of the solvent so this is how molality is defined in our procedure what you're going to do is we need to make up a sample with a known mass of uh, of solute and a known mass of uh, solvent. Here we're going to use water. Later on we'll use the mass of the solute to help work back to the molar mass of the, of, the, of the sample. So first thing is we're going to make a sample with a known mass of solute and known mass of solvent and um, we'll measure out the mass we'll measure out the mass of three milliliters of solute of the of the unknown solution of the unknown mixed um, excuse me unknown material will measure out three milliliters of that unknown pure pure liquid and um, then we're going to use three milliliters not the same three milliliters but use three milliliters of of the unknown pure liquid in our in our sample 
and therefore we'll know the mass of the so of that of that unknown which is acting as the solid. We also need to know the mass of we're going to mix that with 25 milliliters of of water and in this case we're going to figure out the mass by using the density and the volume. So we know how much uh, how much water volume wise and then based off the density um, we'll be able to figure out the uh, we'll be able to figure out the, the, the mass. We'll measure the freezing point of this sample and then you're going to measure the freezing point of pure water or I should say you'll observe this uh, this measurement. The key here is that the measuring the freezing point of pure water is necessary to calibrate the thermometer. So as you, um, you know, not all the thermometers are exactly, uh, the, their scale exactly matches the liquid inside the, the thermometer. And so we just want to make sure we know what does the, what does the thermometer that that was used in the experiment, where does it say water is melting or water is freezing? Freezing and melting are kind of, it happens at the same temperature. So this is a, a little cartoon showing the, uh, it's not exactly the same as, as, as this, uh, as this, um, thing, uh, this system. These guys use, um, have a, have a system that uses an airspace to uh, slow the transfer of heat from, or sort of slow the transfer of heat out from the center uh, to the outside. But I did want to sort of show you there is a stirring apparatus. We have a little bit more, a uh, little bit more complicated one. Um, this system is has the drawback that because there's this airspace, it slows down heat transfer, and so it takes a lot longer. But you are also going to get a much more gradual, or you'll, you'll see a longer period of time that this liquid is transitioning into a solid. And one of the helpful things is at, at phase changes, the temperature change is, or the, I should say, at phase changes, the temperature is constant. So if you ever boil water at, atmosphere, at sort of normal atmospheric pressure, it will, once you reach it up to um, like 100 degrees Celsius, so it's sort of normal boiling point, it stays at 100 degrees zero. So it doesn't, you can't get, there are ways, but it's difficult to get superheated water. What's going on is heat's going in and it's changing liquid water into a gaseous water. And that, it's not increasing the temperature. It's the heat that's going in is causing the phase change to take place. And so you have this um, plateau where, the boiling water is is not increasing in temperature. It's undergoing a phase change. Something similar happens at the freezing point. As you cool it down, as you're pulling heat out of the sample, the temperature of the, the mixture will get lower and lower and lower until you reach the point of the of freezing. And then as heat is pulling out, the heat that's coming out is not uh, resulting in a lowering temperature. It's resulting in the phase change from liquid to solid. Um, so you want to look for this plateau because that's going to be an indication that plateau in the temperature is indicating the phase change is occurring. We're going to use a salt, uh, I should say sodium chloride ice bath. Um, they are very effective, at, pretty effective at getting things cold. Uh, I didn't, I think uh, you'll see I got uh, my temperature down to at least minus 10 or 12 degrees Celsius. But if you use about a one to three mixture of sodium chloride to ice and mix it really well, you can get minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is minus 4 Fahrenheit. So pretty cold. One thing that's a little bit different in how uh, this experiment gets done is the mass of water in the sample is not going to be weighed using a balance. Instead, you're going to, I used a a 25 milliliter volumetric class to measure out, or volumetric pipette, excuse me, not volumetric class, to measure out the, the, the water. And then we're going to take that volume and multiply it by the density to get the, the mass. Now, density of water, if we want to make very, very um, precise measurements, we need to uh, realize that the density of water is close to one at, at sort of room temperature, but 
it's not exactly one. And so in the video you watch, you should see, uh, you'll hear the temperature of the water uh, being used to make up the sample. And then you have to use that number to find a density and a table uh, in your lab manual. And here's a picture of that table. In the version of lab manual I have, it's on the very last page, or I should say, it's on um, like uh, on the inside of the of the very last page, and it's a water density table. It's a little bit hard to read this table, and that's why I, that's why I've shown it here. But what it shows is all these all these little cells in these entries are for are the are can tell you the density of water at a particular temperature. So each row is for a different different uh, single degree change in temperature. So like say if we wanted the density at 10.5, we go down here to this row that's all that's for 10. And then we have to go across the top to the column that's listed as 0.5. And we see this number 654. Now what does that mean, 654? Well, it's it's definitely not the 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 density of water because I know that that's about one gram per milliliter. And these entries are in grams per per milliliter. At the top they say per cubic centimeter, but a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter. They the they are equal to each other. So 654 is not the not 654 grams per cubic centimeter is not the density. Well. The, ta the entries in this table um, are, give the density to six significant figures. And instead of having to write out all six figures in every entry, and for the most part, those first few uh, digits won't change. Um, when, instead, they, uh, they just write the, uh, the last three digits. And you have to go, in general, usually you have to go up to look at the last Entry, or the last place where you see all six digits, and that will give you the first three. So 10.5 we see we are end in 654, but we go all the way up here, and we see the first three digits are 0.999. So for 10.5, the density is 0.999654. Uh, the only exceptions to going sort of back up to the, to the first three digits are... Um, there are a few entries that have a star by them. Here you can see, and it occurs right around where the, the transition. You can see here, these are getting smaller and smaller as we go down, and we get here now we're at 054, 038, 027, 007. Now we're at 991. Oh, we can see that really between these two, we've changed, um, uh, changed, uh, rolled over one digit, and that's why this small number then becomes bigger. And so when you see that little star, that's an indication that you should take. You want to look forward to the next cell entry with all, all, all six digits. So, for example, at 15.8 degrees, the density is 0 0.998975. So how are you going to find the molar mass? Well, it's sort of it's a little bit of a, a a process, but it's not too hard. So first off, you're going to measure the freezing point of a known mass of the unknown with a known mass of water, and um, you're going to measure the freezing point of that, and you're also going to measure the freezing point of pure water, and therefore you'll be able to figure out the change in the delta F. Kf for water is known, and so you can find the molality. Now, molality is equal to moles of solute over kilograms of solvent, and using the the density and the volume of water and converting to kilograms, you'll this this kilograms of solvent, which is water here, you'll know that, and so you'll know molality and kilograms of solvent. You can find the moles of solute, and then the final step is, you take um, you know the moles of solute. And from the beginning, where, uh, when uh, the, um, the unknown um, liquid is measured, you can know the mass of solute. And so you know both of these quantities, and you can therefore find the molar mass. All right, that's all 
I hope you're doing well.